Israel went to captivity and they stayed in captivity for a long time. Listen unto me, people of God. Israel went into captivity and they stayed in captivity for a long time. The Bible says that God spoke to Jeremiah that I want you to go tell to the people of Israel that they will be in captivity. That was not a good news because the news that they would have expected was rather they should be in deliverance. Hallelujah. If there is anything to happen in my life, it should be the deliverance of the Lord. But here comes Prophet Jeremiah. He tells to the children of Israel, you should be in captivity. Why? But you see, there is a way God works that is always oh, oh, pray for Kota. There is a way God works that is always somebody say always. Outside of the way we think. Why will the Lord tell to the children of Israel you will go in captivity? If you can speak to me, why don't you speak to me to tell me my problem is going to be solved? Are you following? Because I got a problem and I'm calling on the name of the Lord. So when you speak to me, it means you answered my prayer. But when you answer my prayer, what would the answer be? Not as I expected. So here comes the children of God through that same grace. Prophet Jeremiah said, don't understand the word of God based on your preferences. Don't understand the voice of the Lord based on your personal expectation, but understand the word of God based on his thought towards you. Let me say that again. In Jeremiah chapter 11, chapter 29, verse 11. The Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Let me tell you something. While God was saying, I know the thought I was thinking and I think towards you, they were in captivity. While God said, I have plan for you and plan of future. Ah, they were in captivity. This sounds like contrary, but God says, my ways are higher than our ways. And his thoughts higher than our thoughts. So what was the Lord saying? To the people of Israel, what is the Lord saying to you and I when he speaks to us and the word that he speaks unto us is sometimes contrary to the answer we were expecting. By the name of the Lord, something happens every time when he speaks his word. Is that he releases angels on your behalf. The Bible says that when Daniel kneeled down to understand the mysteries and the word of the Lord, to unveil the revelation that was coded and codified in the word, the Bible said, as he kneeled down and prayed, here comes the angels of God bringing in the answer, but hey, they did not arrive. 
the same thing happened in the New Testament. As uh, Peter was in jail, here comes an angel and opens the gates of the jail. So we do know from the word of God that God does send both his prophets but also the ministry of the angels to serve those he made. Are you following? Angels don't serve angels. Hallelujah. Somebody say angels don't serve angels. When the Lord sends an angel, is nothing else than a divine help that will be surpassing the ability of men. Because there are certain door a man cannot open. There are certain chains a man cannot break. There are certain jackals a man cannot lose. So if we have to have his finger upon your problem so that he can push it out from your sight that no man can do. That's why the Bible says he knows the thoughts that he has and think towards you. The thought he thinks towards you are, ir are the situation you are in is irrelevant of the thought. Meaning it's not because you are in a situation that is adverse then the thought of God is not for you. Are you following what I'm saying? So it doesn't matter when the Lord is going to answer you. It rather matter how consistent you cry unto him. Because the day he's going to answer you, all your trouble will be forgotten. But before that day, you will have developed what I call endurance. There are certain answers the Lord will not give unto you tic-tac because he needs to develop in you endurance and consistency. In fact, Peter says in the book, I believe 2 Peter, he says after you have been tried for a little while, you will yield, hallelujah. There will be a yielding of something inside of you that need to be developed in order to carry the miracles that God will do in your life. So the Lord speaks unto each one of you, saying, If thou hearest my voice, hallelujah, do not harden your heart. Oh Lord, why is not happening yet? Oh Lord, why? I'm not saying that uh, turn around. Oh Lord, I call on you. The thoughts of God do not change towards you. The plans of God are not rescinded. Sometimes God will not give you certain answers because your prayer is helping you develop more faith. Do you have second detail over there for me? Go ahead, read for me. Second Peter start with the verse one, uh, chapter one. Second Peter starting at chapter one. Uh huh. Verse 1. Uh -huh. Summon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. to them that have obtained like precious faith. 
mm. with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior Jesus Christ. So you have obtained precious faith through the righteousness of God, the Lord Jesus Christ. Continue. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ. How is grace and peace be multiplied unto you? It is through the knowledge of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Continue. Verse 3. According as his divine power has given us. According as his divine power has given us. All things that pertain unto life and godliness. All things that pertains unto life and godliness. Stop there for a moment. He give us all things that pertains unto life and godliness. Certain answers that God is giving unto you in your life is that so you walk godly. Hallelujah. Certain answers that he does not give unto you as you expected is that so that you seek godliness. The righteousness of God towards you is that he has good and perfect plan. But you must make a decision to say, I'm going to press continually until I see what God says. Until I see, I say, until I see what he says. Not hear, but see. The Bible says, he spoke the word and the word became. Hallelujah. So the word of God can become a physical matter that you see. For he said, let there be light. It was a word and it was light that you see. So for you to see the word of God is to experience the manifestation of the tangibility of the grace of God, the promises of God, and the help of God. But you will not see it if you fail to call on him. You will not see it if you quit calling on him. You see, God is not interested into giving you things. He's interested into you giving him he, your heart. Amen? Let me say it again. He created all things. He made all things. He ruled over all things. So, he's more interested in you giving him your heart than he giving you things. Because he knows that what you need is the peace, hallelujah, that comes from him. And he says, my peace I don't give as the world gives. The world gives things, but he gives not as the world gives. So when you have the peace of God and his righteousness, then he add things on you. Hallelujah. We have obtained that precious faith. Oh, we'll be able to press and to continue. We have obtained precious faith so that we'll be able to call on the name of the Lord. To revert back to that lady who sung this song. I don't know if you ever had a back pain. But I can tell you a back pain is a problem by itself. But then a bent back is another problem on the problem.
when you pray and then you don't hear anything from the Lord do not think he does not hear your prayer no let me say that again when you pray and you do not hear any things from the Lord do not think he does not hear your prayer it rather means continue to pray because there is an adversary fighting your prayer Daniel it is clear that it is impossible for God not to hear your prayer because his here are everywhere of it as a bank if you go to the bank and you ask them for money the person who does not have the money is you the one that has the money is the bank all the bank has to do is not to fabricate the money because it's already there all they have to do is to agree and give it down to you but you see, the only step between you and this money you're looking from the bank is the agreement from the person you're speaking at that bank. It's, it's only one step. So as you speak to the person, the person heareth what you're saying. Now when the answer comes out, the answer can be, okay, go, we're going to call you back. The answer can be, yeah or nay. But the fact is that from the moment you address to the banker, you know he's hearing you. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Now, once he heareth you, what you ought to do is to be able to convince them why they should give unto you what you're asking for. That's just on the sake or on the side of men, limited men. On the side of God, he operates much more differently. He has the answer you're looking for. He has every answer you're looking for. So when you call upon him, when you speak unto him, he heareth. Hallelujah. Say, my Lord heareth my prayer. My Lord heareth my prayer. Now listen. The word of God says, when you pray, which is when I hear it. It says, believe that you have receive and you will have it so your only step between the receiving and the prayer is a believing now the believing can be continuous or instant is still believing Because the same God in whom you believe can operate the miracle instant or continuously. He can decide to create a world and everything inside in one day. Hallelujah. Because he's able. The only thing he would have to do, let everything done, done. But he made a first, a second, a third, a fourth, hallelujah, a fifth. There was nothing in his ability that is not able to create all things done one time at the same time. But as he was making it, 
he was doing what we call a development so he's developing your faith hallelujah he's developing your abilities he's developing your mindset he's developing your thoughts he's developing your attitude he's developing your character He's developing you so that when the answer comes in, you are not left behind. So sometimes, God, we say yeah now or yeah tomorrow. But then there is a way for you to know which type of prayer is supposed to receive a year now. Somebody said, tap in the revelation. In the first day, what was made? Light, right? So let me explain to you. Even though it was a development of the world, first second and so forth if you understand that on the first day you can pray for light you will receive light when that first day immediately if you pray outside of that perimeter it will come but on the fourth day so by understanding out and what to pray that is already in the radar of God, you will tap into the answer immediately. So it is, ah, Lord Jesus, help me with this one. Ah. Let me break it down. You need a car. to do a job and then you pray for the car so you can do the job and the car is not coming that's because you did not pray for the revelation of where you should tap first because while you are praying for the car and the car is not coming you should have first pray to meet the dealer. Let me give you an example. And when you meet the dealer, meaning the chief, the, the owner of the dealership, <laughs> hallelujah, you will have a one-on-one -on -one relationship with him and when you ask for the car, it will come. Let me repeat again. For you, you pray for something abstract that you can't touch. But you need that car to accomplish a job. But nobody know you where they sell the car. And you think all you have to do is say, I want the car. Okay, it can work, it cannot work. But if you get to know the one who owns the car dealership, are you following? That's the principle of God. Because it says, first seek the righteousness. It means get to know the one who owns the world. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get to know his thoughts. Get to know his plans. And pray to tap into that moment. So if you need light, and God says, I'm going to make light in the first day. You are already in the. Are you on? Are you, are you, do you understand what I'm saying? Prayer is one thing. 
but how the revelation of what to pray is another thing. On a scale of many of your different problems, there is a cornerstone for all the problems. Which once you discover, you can now pray about it so that the remaining of all those problems are solved. Uh, that, that, that does make sense. So sometimes your prayer should be, Lord, reveal me. <laughs> Hallelujah. What is the root of what I go through? So you, you're going to attack the thing that is holding you back from the root. So once you uproot that thing that is holding you back, then there is nothing more. You see, in the world, in the physical world, if people are in war, two countries, Sometimes they're sent ahead of time what they call in English, I don't know, like bush I can know. I would say that. Um, no, 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 no. In the war that we send people who are not very well trained. Like the, the, the first soldiers who are not very, huh? No, I forgot the word. Anyway. When they send to the war, what they do is that those who joined the army not long ago, they're the one ahead. Are you following? They're the one fighting ahead. So when the enemy is shooting all the cotton and the, the rocket and all that, gonna deal with those ones first. By the time the weapon of the enemy is now going down, they send now the battalion. In French, we say bush I can know. How we say that? Oh, anyway. The strategy is that if they send the very strong warrior first, they might die too quick. So they literally send the weaker first. And when the enemy shoots, now they make intelligence where the weapon is coming from. Unfortunately, that's how war works. But in God, when you pray and you lift up your voice for a specific thing, you have first to know, Lord, in that line of battle, what is the thing that is holding my victory and my breakthrough? So you identify it and you deal with it first. And by doing so, you will have the ability to receive the answer that you need immediately. Because at that time, you understand what is already in the radar. You understand what is already in the plan. You are, Lord, help me with this one. So that's your first line of prayer. How ah, to understand. How ah, to reveal. To receive the root of all the problems. The second thing. Is to learn to worship and praise. You got to learn to worship and praise. There are times when your breakthrough will come only because you are praising God. Hallelujah. Paul and Silas. Can, can you put that for me, please? In the book of Acts. There are 
are certain limitations in which you add. After you prayed and you understood what is the root issue and you pray against it, you pray for God to intervene, then you manifest the joy of that answer through praise and thanksgiving. That's why the Lord says, let your prayer be made with thanksgiving. Go ahead, please. Acts chapter 16, verse 16. Acts chapter 16, verse 16. Go ahead. And it came to pass. And it came to pass. As we went to prayer. As we went to prayer. A certain damsel possessed with a spirit of divination. No, no, no. When Paul and Silas were in the... Uh, in a, in a jail. Hallelujah. Um, Acts chapter 16, verse. Do you have it? Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Go ahead. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and uh, sang. Go, go, go from verse 20. Acts chapter 16, verse 20. Mm hmm. And brought them to the magistrates. Go ahead, further again. 18. Acts chapter 16, verse 18. Mm -hmm. And this did she many days. Okay, go ahead. But Paul be now, the issue was that she was reading from the beginning, but the issue quickly is that you had a lady who was speaking the things of God through a spirit that the Bible called what? A python spirit. And Paul saw that that was an evil spirit, so he casted out that spirit. And the master of that lady who used to make money out of her was angry because now that lady is no longer possessed of that evil spirit to do those things that will make him have money. So they brought Paul in the court to charge him because he cast out the evil spirit from that lady. Hallelujah. Continue. But Paul, Acts chapter 16, verse 18. Uh -huh. And this did she many days. Uh -huh. But Paul, being grieved, mm -hmm. turned and said to the Spirit, I command thee in uh -huh. the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. Uh -huh. And he came out the same hour. Mm -hmm. Verse 19. And when her master saw that the hope of their gains was gone. So when the master of that evil spirit in the lady of that lady, I mean in the, in the, in the life of that lady saw that the mean to have money is gone because now the evil spirit has left her. What he did? They caught Paul and Silas mm -hmm. and drew them into the marketplace unto the rulers. So they caught Paul and Silas and drew them unto the marketplace to the, and the ruler and... And brought them to the magistrates, mm -hmm. saying, These men, being Jews, do exceedingly trouble our city, and teach customs which are not lawful for us to receive. So, as long as the evil spirit was using the word of God to make money, they were fine. But when the word of God find out the evil spirit, hallelujah, <laughs> and casted it out, then they were angry. Continue. Neither to observe being Romans. Verse 22. And the multitude rose up together against them. Mm -hmm. And the magistrates rent off their clothes and commanded to beat them. Verse 23. Mm. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, mm. they cast them into prison. Hallelujah. The only wrong they did was to help the life of somebody to be restored. Not all your problem comes because you sin. Not all your problem comes because you wrong. Some of your problem also come because you right. Hallelujah. So in the case of Paul, when you identify that the cause of your problem is not your sins. Amen. When you identify that the cause of your suffering is not your sins. But the activity of the enemy, hallelujah, just like Paul and Silas, at that time, you need to rise in praise. 
If the cause of your problem is sins, you don't rise to praise, you rise to repentance. Hallelujah. <laughs> we, we, we don't mix up things. Hallelujah. But when you identify that the cause of your problems, you follow the Lord, you seek the Lord, you have repented, and then the Lord has forgiven you, but there is still something ongoing for which God has already forgiven you, at that time, you know it's no longer God holding you from having that blessing or breakthrough, but it is the enemy. It is the devil. At that time, you got to rise in praise. Because from the book of Genesis to Revelation, many times it was praise who broke every hold of the enemy. Continue, please. Verse 23 of Acts chapter 16. And when they had laid many stripes upon them, mm -hmm. they cast them into prison, mm -hmm. charging the jailer to keep them safely, who having received such a charge, thrust them into the inner prison and made their feet fast in the stocks. Verse 25. And at midnight, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Paul and Silas what? Prayed. Uh huh. And sang praises unto God. Oh, hold on a second. Say it again. And at midnight, uh huh. Paul and Silas prayed. And at midnight, Paul and Silas did what? Prayed. Prayed and and sang praises unto God. and sang praises. So they prayed and they praised. They prayed and they praised. Again, in repentance, you pray because you are sorry. When the Lord has forgiven you, you do not repent again. Does it make sense? If the Lord forgave you for insulting your brother, and then you go, oh Lord, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, it means you did not even believe he forgave you to start with. That by itself is another sin. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, the case of sin and repentance is one thing. But what we're talking about is a case of identifying that the enemy finger is in your matters. That the activities of the demonic, because the Bible talks about demonic activities, and I always say it. The demons, they don't care that you believe or not. Mm, hallelujah. They don't. The demons don't care that you are knowledgeable of the word of God or not. They don't. Continue, please. Acts chapter 16, mm. verse 25. Mm -hmm. And at midnight... Paul and Silas prayed. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. And sang praises unto God. And they sang praises unto God. And the prisoners heard them. And the prisoner heard them. And you see, those prisoners that put them down over there, all they would have expected Paul to do was to cry. The enemy expects you to cry over your sorrows. He expects you to cry. Over your situation. Oh Lord, I, I don't know. That, that's all the enemy expect. In the book of Exodus, God delivered the children of Israel from the end of the enemy. They were in bondage and slavery. They were under shackles and chains. God came through. He broke the shackles, broke the heavy hands, and delivered them at midnight. 
The enemy was not happy about it. The Lord Jesus said so. He said, when a demon is driven out of a man, hallelujah, that demon goes what? Go look for seven. More stronger than he that was inside your body. And what does he do? He comes back. Hallelujah. The Bible says, the Lord Jesus says that when he comes back, he's looking inside the place where they cast him out. If it is clean and empty, meaning you are delivered, but you do not have the spirit of God residing in you. What happened? The Bible said that your case become worse than he began. So for the children of Israel, they were delivered from the end of Pharaoh. But the appointment of God in their life were not to die. It was to go into the promised land. Somebody say, I must go in the promised land. I must go in the promised land. Listen, children of God. God does not deliver you so that you will go backward. Are you following? He does not deliver you either so that you stay stuck and cry. No. He delivers you so you go forward. So in the case of the children of Israel, they were delivered. They were set free. The enemy was not happy about it. He brought his entire army to get them back. Hey. Let me explain to you the work of the enemy. Let's say you smoke cocaine. And then you say, oh Lord, no. I need to quit. Actually, we watch a movie like this. A Christian movie. The guy was a drug addict. He was a tempered drug addict. He was so much of a drug addict. It was a, it's actually a real story. A, a, like a, somebody who, who went through this. That when the police is called to say, ah, this guy over there is doing something, go arrest him. Even the police. <laughs> even the police wants to quit. They said, this guy, anytime we go to arrest him, it is fight. <laughs> So the police knew that this guy was troubled, troubled too much. So whosoever was on duty and the call came on, that, that person just wanted to take vacation. <laughs> because the guy was troubled. So several times, his life was just jail. He goes to jail like uh, he goes to the Walmart. He goes like there's some. Some people, when they come before the judge, they just say, oh, just send him in jail. Ne next case. <laughs> because he knows there is nothing here to be taught about. He's already guilty. Go. <laughs> so the guy came, finally, he went to jail. Somebody gave him a Bible. I, I, I can tell you, jail is the best place to review your life. I can tell you that. In jail, like, there are three places to review your life. Jail, sickness, amen? And then when you are on the bed to die. That's the three best places. When you are in those positions, the way you review your life, even CNN doesn't do better. Because you review it every single detail. Oh, what did I do? What did I miss? Why did I do that? <laughs> Hallelujah. Anyway, so the guy, they finally had him out. And he, he really took the decision to change. He said, no, this one today, I ain't going back. In jail, he was, he was reading the Bible. He was praying. I mean, he was strong. When he went out, his homie called him. Hey, brother. How are you doing? We're having somebody over here. He's like, no, 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 I ain't coming, I ain't coming today. No, no, no. 
The guy said, we got girls. <laughs> hey, no, no, no girls. We got uh, 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 drugs. He's like, mm, how much? <laughs> mm. He's like, okay, just, just let me stop by to say hi, and then I'm going to go. So he came. He stopped by. When he say hi, the drug went in his mouth. <laughs> You shouldn't have opened his mouth at all. <laughs> he went right back there. He went right back there. And unfortunately, that night, somebody overdosed. So the police arrived, and he fought again with the police. They sent him right back. The second time he went back to jail, I mean, not the second time, but after he converted, when he went back, he prayed. He, he was ashamed. And so he prayed. But this time he was truly, truly believing, okay, this one, this time is, is good. He went out. And he trained even in jail and they finally got him a job. And he succeeded. He was an excellent worker. He was great. And then the army called him. Homie. <laughs> Somebody at the work party. We got, a, we got a, a party. You see, there are things God delivered you, but you took your feet and your foot and your body and you went back into it. Uh, it's going to happen again. That's why in the Bible, when they were delivered from something, they were burning it. Like let's say those people who were doing a magic and so forth like that. The books that they were having, they would take it and burn it. Because if you were delivered from something and you go look it back into it, you will fall into it. Right back. Because as long as you live, your flesh will not change. <laughs> you got to be aware of this. Your flesh will not change. So you got to make a decision to say, okay, what is the cause that makes my flesh fall all the time? And take that cause out. Because if you put that cause next, and oh Lord, deliver me, that cause is over there. Oh Lord Jesus, oh Lord. <laughs> you got to make a decision. Anyway, so the guy finally went out. He did really great, great worker. Everything was great. He was making money and... One of the colleagues told him, hey, let's go for it. Yeah, and then he accepted, he went. And he went back right into it. And that was two years after. He did good for two years. And he went right back. Because in between his freedom and the time he went right back, he did not have the consistency of the Holy Ghost in his life. Because it is the Holy Spirit that reminds you of the things you should not do. And that reminds you of the things you should do. So when you start quenching the spirit of God, you are found with your flesh. And your flesh <laughs> will remind you <laughs> where you belong. So finally, the guy went right back in jail again. They arrested him. Another fight. <coughs> when he arrived in jail, the master jailer really believe on him and really really told him that he should not want to have him come back and he told him yo i won't come back again so two years passed he was and he came right back so as he arrived he saw the master jailer he could not even look at him he just put his head down went by finally he went out again when he went out he looked he said i, I need to get away from 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 that stronghold so you see he accepted Christ he turned his life around but the stronghold hallelujah was there and the only way for him to get delivered was to walk away from it back in the days they used to have DVD, not DVD, a VHS. <laughs> Do 
is this somebody? So, back in the days, it was difficult, even though not impossible, but it was difficult for a man or a woman or a person to commit certain type of sin because you have to have the VHS and the VHS has to work because sometimes the VHS, when you put that inside the, 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 the reader, the, the, the tape, the tape cuts off and then you have to open it and you have to tape it. <laughs> so even that time you finish to do that, even sin is gone. <laughs> but nowadays, it's just a click of a button. So it has to be in the life of a child of God who prays for something to understand how and what is the root of the other issues over here. And deal with the root. So all the trees, I said the trees, the apprentices of, uh, that you see over here around will be dealt with that. Like one of my trees on the front. <laughs> I told to a guy to come to cut it down a little bit. He gave me, he cut it off. <laughs> he said, I'm going to give you some prophecy. <laughs> he took it off completely. Now I look, I look around. I'm looking for some tree. There is no tree. I say, Jesus. <laughs> anyway. So, you have to make a decision by saying, okay. These are my lines of prayers. These are my lines of answer I'm looking for. These are the lines of breakthrough I'm looking for. Which one of which is causing what not to function correctly? In any house where you have lights, if one of the lights goes out, you have only three possibilities. First, it is... Non, huh? The bulb itself is fried. Second... There is issue with the, uh, the, the line, the electrical, amen? Third is a breaker box. So as long as you can control within your house, you need to look which is what causing what. Outside of your house is the, uh, uh, how do you call those people who give the electric? Yeah, electric company. You don't control them. Hallelujah. So whatever they do can only affect you that much because you can't control them. Meaning, they're outside of your house. So if they deliver properly the electricity and they did not fail outside there, it means the problem is not outside. The problem is inside. Does it make sense? So in your life, the problem is not outside. Is inside. You got to find the root cause of the issue. When you find the root cause of the issue, now your prayer becomes targeted. Now you are not just like a shooting every prayer everywhere. No, now you have targets because you know what you're dealing with, and then you're targeting with every bomb and an atomic bomb you can to break down those powers at that point you will receive answer because your answer if if this light is fried and then you go buy a new switch tell me how this will work something this one is fried and you go buy a full new breaker box tell me how this will work that's how you do when you pray. You're directing your prayer over the things that are not the cause of this one. That's why I say you got to have revealed prayer. To know the root cause. <laughs> yes. Because any electrician that comes in your home and as soon as he arrives, he looks with his eyes. You say, I see that the eye, uh, I see that the light is uh, not working. Yeah, I know it's not working. I see that too. <laughs> what I'm trying you to do is not to look what is happening. It's to use your tools and detect. Are you following? Detect where the disconnection is. So there are certain things you can do just by the sight. But I can tell you, the most important things you never do it by the sight. So Lord, 
this is the prayer I have. I know you answer prayer. From all of them, which one is posing a, a which one is not posing the flow of your answer? I need to remove it from to see that flow. That's why God says he knows the thoughts that he has towards you. Because regardless on where you at, he still have good plan for you. Regardless of where you at, because those plans are awaiting the manifestation, are awaiting you to be manifested. So he's not removing the plans. I will go back to the house and the light. God is like the electric company. He makes sure you receive electricity in your home. Now, are you deal with that electricity within your house? Hallelujah. That's so God is delivering power all the time, continually. And he makes sure that he remains connected. So he does all the outside work so that you don't go without light. All he's asking you is to pay attention to why your bulb is not on. And if you see that the bulb is not on, don't call him to say your breaker is broken. Because once you call him, oh Lord, please send me a new breaker. <laughs> You're gonna send you a breaker, but no, your problem is still not solved. Do I make sense? Your problem is still not solved. But what you can do is to call to say, This is the issue I have. Can you help me troubleshoot it? So the electrician out there, we say, okay, well, start with your breaker. So you go check, it's all fine, okay? Your switch, all fine. Can you remove the bulb and put it somewhere else? And another bulb, put it in that one. So once you make the switch, you know that that bulb is not working there, but the other one is working here, then you know, hallelujah, the problem is with the bulb. So at that time, your prayer is now precise. It would be to go to pray or to get or to buy a new bulb. Problem solved. In some problem comes because of lie. Some trouble because of lie. In fact, the Bible said that the devil is what? The father of how many lies? All lies. Let me give you that secret. One of the repeated, repetitive issue you may have is lie. Because once the, the thief is caught up stealing. Some of them, they become very sorry. Some of them, they become proudful. But in their mind, they already had a plan to lie. They already had a plan. So then we ask them, why did you steal? It was not me. It was my hands. <laughs> they already had a plan. But that plan did not manifest until 
it came to pass. So the root of it that actually caused the whole line was lie. That's what the Bible tells us to live in truth. That's what the Bible tells us to speak truth. Why? Because you know, if I do this one, and they ask me, have you done this? I will have to tell the truth. <laughs> and the trouble will, might, might be more. So what I will do is, okay, I want to live in truth. The truth set you free. So you say, oh Lord, the Bible says that God is the God of truth. Amen? So you say, Lord, my problems over here, the root of it is this one, that one. So if the root of your problem is lie, so Lord, help me live in truth. Because at that point over here, what you're going to do and build on will be on truth. Some people that arrive in the United States from overseas. And when they came, they went to marry somebody to have paperwork. So they organize a deal pay to have the paperwork. So the basis of it was law, right? Now, the person they paid to make the deal has become Christian, <laughs> has converted. The person that pay to make the deal has changed his life. So the day they have to have the green card, they call the person so the person will give the confirmation. Hello, Abu Dulayman. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Abu Rahman is not answering. <laughs> the guy is standing, the one who made the deal, he's standing at the USCIS, waiting, is before the agent. And the agent said, Okay, you have passed all the tests and all the things, and you have been proven approved. But the last one is to call the person you married with to just give a verbal approval. Oh, it's not the problem. It's not the problem. Ringing, 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 ringing. <laughs> All he has is a voicemail of Abu Draman. But Abu Draman yesterday met the Lord. Abu Draman yesterday changed his life. Abu Draman yesterday, just like Paul, overnight was completely change you say I ain't doing that no more so your problem started right here hallelujah now you don't receive the answer of Abu Draman the agent is waiting for you to confirm through Abu Draman Abu Draman is not answering the call Two months. Two years. Now you're stuck. You're looking for Abu Rahman. Abu Rahman became a, a pastor. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you go see Abu Rahman in his church, and Abu Rahman says, Hey, brother, me, I gave up all this. I don't do that no more. He said, Ah. But if you don't. Continue the lie, I'm done. Huh? You see, the problem was the lie. So there are certain things that the Lord will want you to walk in up righteousness. But thank God that even if the root of your issue was lie, he can still turn it around. Hallelujah. 
Say, Lord, turn my life around. Turn my life around. That's why God is good. Because even if the root of your problem was la, deceit, he can still turn it around. Jacob, the root of his problem was lie and deceit. Amen? I want him to find out that either he go meet his brother and lie, <laughs> amen, or he go meet his brother and ask forgiveness. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. Somebody say, Lord, give me revelation. Give me revelation. Hmm, this one is too deep. It took me like... Jacob was already blessed by God before he was born. Some of you, you don't know the blessings that God has for you because you're thinking that it is your maneuver that will get you to the place. No, God already blessed and prophesied over you before you were in the womb of your mother. God said, Jacob going to be the greater. But along the way, he didn't perceive the thoughts of God. And when he didn't perceive the thought of God, here comes how the enemy twist around and shift his blessings. And when the enemy shift his blessing, the next thing that happened, Jacob is in problem. But when Jacob falls in problem, he realized he has one way out. The one he has deceived, seeking for him. The one he lied to is angry at him. So now at that point, Jacob has no other place to go but to cry on the Lord. So he decided to go to the mountain, cry on the Lord, and the Lord answered him. But you see, when the Lord answered you, you need to live upright. Because you see, when the Lord answered him, and Jacob went down and met his brother, he did not play the deceitful. Are you following? He did not play the lie. No. When he met his brother, he just pulled out by asking forgiveness, by presenting. Are you following what I'm saying? If Jacob would have tried to do something deceitful, his problem would have multiplied by 100 right there. Hey. Because while he was up on the mountain, trying on God, God was in the heart of Jacob, of, of Esau, to change. But you see, Esau, even if God was working in his heart, Jacob, for him to see the restoration, he had to go in the line that God has traced. Will Jacob would have stepped out of that line just to do something stupid? Right there, Esau, who was with all his uh, army and warrior would have finished Jacob right there. So the work of God in the life of Jacob and the work of God in the heart of uh, uh, Esau needed him to be in line with the route that God has traced. So he caught the revelation properly. When he came, he said, let me serve you. Let me give to you. Let me. Hallelujah. So he understood how to humble himself. Then God lifted him up. That's why I say, you have to identify what is the cause 
of the trouble. If the light is out, that you go buy a whole new breaker, it won't work. If the light is out, and it's a ball that is fried, and you go buy a whole new switch, it won't work. You will be wondering, but I don't understand. I replaced the cable, I replaced the light, I replaced the wire, I replaced the breaker, and it's still not working. So at that point, you have to have the revelation to understand how to troubleshoot that light. Take it from where it's supposed to be. Put it somewhere else. And once you see it's not working, and you take something else, you put that in, and then you see that other one is working where it was supposed to be, then you know. You narrow down. It is important that you don't trade your blessings, your breakthrough, your miracles for any other plans and the lie and deceit of the enemy. It's important that you don't trade them. Because the plans of God for you is clear. For I know the thoughts that I have for you. Period. After that, there is no other say. I said that regard, even if you are under oppression, God has taught for you. He taught to the children of Israel. He said, when you are in Babylon, marry, build, pray for the peace of Babylon. You will be thinking, that's the, 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 um, how do we say that? People who take some, huh? The, the, the capture. The capturer. Captain. That's the oppressor. So if there is a prayer, I should pray. It should be destroyed. You know what I'm saying? But God says, you don't get my plan. My plan is to train you so that uh, you stop disobeying me. Hallelujah. So he allows you to be captive, but he wants you to leave. Because his plan is you're going to go out and you're going to continue building. So he says, even if you are captive, continue to build. And pray for the peace of the Babylon. Because if they destroy Babylon while you are there, <laughs> you destroy it too. So when 70 years are arrived, the prayer was particular. Lord, you say after 70 years, you're going to return us. So the time I've arrived, I can only pray without. Amen. So once you return me, then you can destroy my beloved. <laughs> Hallelujah. You got to have strategies in the spirit. Because the house you built in Babylon. If they destroy it, you lose money. But if they don't destroy Babylon, and you say, okay, I'm leaving, I'm selling the house, they're going to give you money for it. And then you live with the money, and they destroy it. <laughs> At least you have benefit, strategy. So you have to have that prayer where God we train your eyes, train your ear, train your mind to know where is the root of the line of problem. So you attack it there. So you solve all this.
And to finish, regardless how long the enemy is attacking you, regardless how long, remember, God allow you to live. Remember that. Regardless how strong the enemy attacks you, God allows you to live. So that uh, you can live long enough, not only to continue and give the praise unto God, but for the enemy to see that you were no longer where he held you. Does it make sense? It is God who's allowing you to live because he knows the plans and the thoughts he has for you. The path is already traced. The path is already made by him. And as you commit yourself on the Lord, that straight and narrow path, that's what you got to take. When you take the straight and narrow path, and then you arrive at that destination he's looking for you to be there it's gonna be larger because the bible says when you pray in secret your father will recompense you how openly the sound of your testimony will be loud hallelujah so you got to keep on pressing you got to keep on praying. Sing. Don't look back. Go forward. Don't stay there either. Move forward. And as you continue pressing, the same grace of our Lord Jesus will be with you, guide you, and prosper you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.